months before exam I started preparing okay and I took one year come magazine and I read that one year come magazine some seven to eight times okay after reading seven to eight times the entire one year magazine you know how many questions came one three and that question was triclosan have you heard that okay they had asked triclosan toiletries that was there and I could know the triclosan question only in the seventh time of my reading because in one box somewhere at the bottom they have given the triclosan and my mind went there only because I had read so many times other things I was getting bored and I saw that so the point I'm trying to make is you have to read current affairs but all the other things are just there you know get fear into you read one source of one year but make sure that you keep reading it again and again that is the only trick there is okay yeah what else you were, yeah, you were telling something That is very, very important. The last 10 days, okay? Whatever you're doing, June 5th is the, uh, this thing, right? From uh, around 27th to 28th till June 4th, at least for two, two hours every day, keep reading the UPSC papers. Not from, and don't go beyond 2014. From 2014 to 2020, keep reading those. You should get used to that language. Please don't read uh, institutes, MCQs in the last seven to eight days. Keep reading UPSC papers. Okay, I'll tell you the reason. See, there are two attitudes in a way UPSC, I mean, papers are set. One is institutes. You can take insights, take whatever it is. When insights or any institute will set a paper, they are not setting, setting the paper to test your common sense, your presence of mind, your calm nerves. Is, is he able to think outside the box? Do you think they keep all this criteria to frame questions? They don't. Okay, they will only set questions to trap you. Okay, that is, they are going to copy paste and they are going to change that, this, 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 this. They are, in one sentence, they will keep so many different traps that you are bound to go wrong here and there. Okay, this is the attitude with which institutes will set the paper. Okay, but this is not needed. This is only a learning exercise. So, if, for example, if you want to know the concept of president or parliament very well, then solve those and learn the nitty gritties of, okay, this is how the removal of president happens or parliament happens. So, that is fine. UPSC doesn't care about such traps. When UPSC is setting the paper, for example, I'll tell you one thumb rule. When a question appears difficult, the answer is always easy. Have you observed this? This is one thumb rule in UPSC. Okay. Whenever a question is appearing out of bound, like, yaar, ye kya, what? I have not heard this only, the answer will, worry, will be very, very easy. Okay. That Deshantar something question had come, mystery question. Everyone thought I've never heard this book. Read that particular name of the book properly you will get the answer there so that is one thumb rule the name whenever a question appears difficult the answer will be easy this parameter is not followed in institutes this parameter is followed in UPSC because UPSC wants to test your presence of mind can they decipher by just reading the name there getting it like this you will find a lot of things of UPSC okay for example one more thing is if there are two statements yeah, if this is, uh, let us say, virtual reality, they have defined like this. This is augmented reality, they have defined like this. Okay, have you observed? It will always be like this. They would interchange the definitions. Have you observed this? This will always be the case. This will be international convention on uh, some corruption. This will be transnational something, something. See, it will always be like this. I am not telling that next time if you see like this, just mark none of the above and come. These are all pointers for you to be extra cautious and just check. Observing this. See, that is why these are the things that you need to decipher by looking at the UPSC pre previous year paper again and again and again. Okay. Like they will use some keywords. You might have heard Aditya sir has taken sessions for you. Yes. Right. So, he would have given ample amount of examples of the keywords that they use. You should be aware of those keywords. Just that keywords are there doesn't mean that the answer is right or wrong. The keyword is there to act as a speed bump to your thinking. The moment you are seeing an extreme statement, three years down the lane, we used to blindly mark it as wrong. Okay. Now, uh, Asiatic lions are found only in Gir Forest. We cannot mark it as wrong. Okay. It is found only in Gir Forest because UPS has changed the trend. But the point I am trying to make is, even today, if there are 10 extreme statements in the question paper, seven will be wrong. Because the, you cannot put 10 extreme statements that is correct. That person has to do a lot of research, which they will not do. Okay, like that, one more thing I will see. If there is one question, okay, if there is a question like this, okay, the question is going for around half of the page. 
and then they give you 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? This is one question. The next question will be only of 2 or 3 lines. Okay? It will be like this. And the, you, you would have spent around 2 to 2 and a half to 3 minutes by reading this question. Okay? And you would have spent another 30 seconds thinking about this particular option. You will mark something here. Let us assume. Or you will not mark. You will be so frustrated by the, by the time you go here. That person would have put the way most easiest question here. And you will be so happy. And you would have put the easiest of the option here. Okay? Now your mind knows that you have wasted time here. The moment you read this, you will mark this and go. Okay, the answer is always this. Observe this. There was one question on internet of things. Have you remember? Go to the next question and see that. Last year also, there is one question like this. Go to the next question and see. Okay? Uh, I am not able to remember the exact questions. It has been a long time. But you see this. Okay? So, these are some subtle things that you need to identify. Okay? That is why the last 7 days, do not see, I mean, you keep that as whatever test series that you have done, you have marked there and you want to revise, revise those things. I am not telling do not revise. You have to spend the entire 7 days in the questions and the language of UPSC. Okay? Keep looking at that questions. That language will repeat and that language will help you to get at least 5 questions right. Believe me, seriously. Okay? This is the next takeaway. All right. What else? So, one is make sure your static or basics is very strong. Do not get into that paraphernalia whenever these people or anyone says outside current affairs got that material or this material, it does not matter. Okay? You cannot cover current affairs and you should not cover current affairs like that. The second is, what was the second one? Hmm? Ah, that was the third one. What was the second one? Exactly. You should not focus on the extreme questions like, uh, previous year, made some 20 questions came somewhat out of the box. Do not worry about those things. This time, something else will come. Okay? Don't worry about this. And the third thing is the language of UPSC. Okay? Make sure that you spend ample amount of time in that. Okay? All right. What else? What else? Okay. That is all you will find it out. Okay, use easy questions, difficult questions. See, they will divide it like that. Each and every sincere candidate will, will be able to get 90 correct. That is, you will come there between 45 questions. Okay? 45 to 50 questions, the sincere candidates will always get it right. The next 10 to 15 questions is where the game is. Okay? And everyone will fall here. You, these 15 questions is where you have to apply your mind. Apply your mind is not difficult. Okay? You have to just calmly sit and think. You will, you will get the answers. Okay, that is the practice that you have to do. Okay, all right. In the next four days, whenever I get a chance, I'll keep coming back to this. All right, because let's not waste too much time, because we have got ample things to cover. Uh, online guys are watching, is it? Is geography important for prelims? Yes, sir. Huh? One of the most important. Huh? Then why am I taking it so late? <laughs> five to six questions come. Okay, five to six questions come from geography. Not that significant. Last year there was a break of trend. Before they were asking a lot of mapping questions, especially current in news or places in news. Okay. Last year they have broken the trend. There is no because the institutes have started marketing thematic approach of uh, prelims, right? So, study renewable energy, study Indus Valley civilization, study, uh, you know, uh, Andaman and Nicobar, one question will come, study uh, parliament chapter, study reports, international reports, international organization, one question will come. So, what had happened, like this, they had framed around 30 to 40 themes. One question used to come from that theme. Agriculture may one theme used to, one question used to come. So, because they had done that, the, last year they broke the theme. Okay, so do not focus overly on themes this time and go. Please do not do that. Make sure that you study your basics and go. Okay? Uh, so, in geography, the theme was, one was, there were three questions on mapping that used to come. Okay? In these three questions on mapping, one used to be normal static world map, two used to be places in news. Okay? Now, last time what they did is, they did not give any of the three. Instead of the three, they translated everything into Indian geography. Okay? So, last year, most of the questions came from Indian geography rather than, I mean, World geography, a couple of questions came, but the major focus was on Indian geography factual part. 
all right so the focus will be on indian geography going forth also okay make sure that you are well versed with indian geography all right i mean i am anyway going to take it but the priority should be given to indian mapping and indian uh, geography okay yes five to six questions come but overall in prelims geography does not hold that much of a value but what about mains what about mains you will not get interview call if you don't know geography well in mains okay because eight questions eight questions come in uh, uh, gs1 okay forget the other overlapping parts in other gs papers from that subject itself eight questions come so 10 uh, marker ka 4 15 marker ka 4 so for mains geography should be very good okay that we'll discuss later on but you should just have this idea in your this thing okay so we will start off uh, today tomorrow we will do indian geography day after tomorrow we will do the world geography parts okay and uh, indian geography have any of you attended my offline normal classes you have attended online yeah that's what no okay okay then why are you sitting <laughs> all right drainage or rivers okay so these are the five chunks the la last is indian mapping okay the last is indian mapping the most important and question will definitely come from this this year also it will come last four years also it has come the next two years also it will come this this and this okay these are the three chunks the questions will always come because the only reason is upsc has not run out of content in these chapters that is the only reason i am telling that questions will come other things it has more or less asked so many questions out of it there is no much questions to ask even in soil they are not going to ask you something very geographical okay they'll ask you something very it's a mix of environment and current affairs okay for example they are using some type of zero budget natural farming how is it going to affect soils okay something on those lines for example there may be uh coastal mining how is it going to affect soils like that they are going to make sure that it's more application oriented rather than geography oriented okay soil vegetation and things but these are the static parts where more or less it will get repeated okay indian climate not that significant but climatology okay when we take the world geography's climatology aspect it becomes very important the questions will come from climatology uh, it it keeps repeating in climatology but indian climate as such will not come but i'll touch upon this while i'm doing climatology because then there will be a coherence in the conceptual uh, continuity okay so these are the three things that we'll finish now okay this two are interlinked okay these two are interlinked that's this is what today we'll finish okay these two are interlinked it's very very important see the one more thing you need to understand when you're studying uh, prelims understand the philosophy of the subject and understand the philosophy of a concept are you getting with the, see for example if i take geography as a subject geography is nothing but having spatial sense if i say bundelkhand you should have some idea okay bundelkhand comes here it's semi arid region if it is semi arid and there is no rivers obviously the agriculture will be more based towards pulses and oil seeds okay this philosophical i mean common sense is what is required so if i tell you history just like how geography is a spatial science history is what it's a temporal science right you should have some temporal sense in that for example if i tell you who are janapadas okay you should not give a textbook definition of who are janapadas in your mind temporally you should know okay paleolithic mesolithic neolithic 
the IV, I mean Bronze Age, IVC, then came the you know Aryan culture, then came Janapadas. That became Mahajanapadas. This special sense. Mahajanapadas came Magadas. After Magadas came the first incursion from foreign invasion, the Alexander and Xerxes. Getting it? After that came other kingdoms, Mauryas. After Mauryas came the second invasion. That is where the Kanishka and all those things. This way you have to have the temporal sense of all the kingdoms till Mughals, the end of Mughals. Okay? If you believe me, if you have this temporal sense in history, go back to the paper. Okay, go back to the history, ancient and medieval paper, you can answer most of the questions. That that is what that is what the UPSC will play around. If you have some temporal sense, okay, they would have given some king, they would have given the kingdom, you will know that it will not match. Okay? They so this is knowing the philosophy of the subject. Geography is all about having a spatial sense. Okay? Ocean currents. Okay, ocean currents somewhat you, you don't have to know the exactness of North Atlantic ocean currents at all. Okay, you should know that okay, warm ocean currents come somewhere near the equator, then they take a rightward bound, then they go towards the 40 degrees and they take another rightward. That, that much of common sense is enough for you to answer this. Getting it? So develop that habit. For example, see, uh, let us say that uh, they have got according to RBI Act 1934, okay, RBI as regulating powers on urban cooperative banks. Is this statement correct? According to RBI Act 1934, Okay, RBI as regulating powers over urban cooperative banks. I'm sorry. Hmm. Do not have power over urban cooperatives. Okay, you are telling something. Amazing. How do you know that? Have you read the provisions of RBI Act 1934 or have you heard Banking Regulation Act? No, I am just asking you, I am not trying to tell anything. How do you know the answer? Have you read the Banking Regulation Act? Uh, I have The reason why I asked is, that little knowledge is all that is required. See, now let us say that you are reading two acts. RBI Act 1934 is one on one page. In On one page you have Banking Regulation Act. Now you read the entire some 15 provisions of RBI Act 1934. The normal tendency is what to buy at that 15 or at least to remember 5 or 6. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter at all. You have to only remember the gist of what RBI 1934 act is. Okay? Again, Banking Regulation Act, the moment you are reading 20 different provisions, don't try to remember the 20. Understand the gist of what Banking Regulation Act is. So let us assume if I have read these two, my final crux of RBI Act is, okay, Within the RBI, within the RBI, whatever changes has to happen inside the RBI will always be done through. Whenever RBI wants to do changes in other banks as a regulator, then it will always be done through. This is the philosophy. You catch this. Let UPC play whatever game they want. Now, if there is a statement that says according to bank, uh, according to uh, the Banking Regulation Act, Monetary Policy Committee was created in RBI. Is this statement correct? Not GST Council. What did I say? Uh, MPC. Monetary Policy Committee was created by the amendment of Banking Regulation Act. Is this statement correct? No. See, you are so confidently telling no. Because now you know the gist. Okay, the moment you catch the gist of something, okay, even if they play around with the words, it doesn't matter because you know the gist. You, how can something that is interior to RBI be done outside or something that is outside RBI be done in inside? Getting it? This is how you need to find the crux of every subject. Polity also is not that difficult. Polity may, there is three to four philosophy that you need to hold. India follows a democratic, uh, India is a democratic and liberal country. See, the preamble, preamble is what? Philosophy of the constitution. It is philosophy of your polity questions also. Okay, whatever question, if the, you take judicial, the question is on judicial custody, the question is on whatever thing they are asking, torture, whatever it is, it cannot be outside the ambit of the philosophy of that preamble. Getting it? So, if that statement when you read in polity, if it is not making sense with your preamble, then it is wrong. Okay. For example, if someone is in judicial custody and someone is not allowed to give any type of external uh, help, is it correct? 
Correct, it is against the preamble. So obviously the statement is wrong. That's all is actually needed. But what will happen? New people will go, oh, I didn't study judicial question. Let me read that also. Let me read this also. That should not be the case. Your preamble is your essence. Okay. More or less to even narrow down it, constitutionalism. Okay. This word is the philosophy most of the questions you will get right in polity. Okay. So that, that, that is all the game is. Understand the crux. Okay. How many people can tell me here chronologically from Paleolithic till Mughals? Raise your hands. Now, I'm not going to ask you. It is not about uh, you know shaming or naming anyone. I'm just telling you. See how many people can name it confidently. Hmm? That see, uh, sorry for digressing. That is if that is not the way you read history, then why are you reading history? Because the definition of history only you are not meeting. Correct. So this is how you have to go. This is Paleolithic. Let's say you are going temporally. All right, and this is Mughals. You know the timeline first. Know the timeline properly. Okay. Then start adding one one feature and going. Okay. What was the architectural aspects of it? Kingdoms. Okay. Political. Social. Start adding everything and go. That's all. Your entire preparation. That person cannot play with your knowledge if you have clarity like this. Okay. Simply random taking. Okay. Mauryas is important. Let me read Mauryas. You will read something here. Okay, then Mughals are important. Let me read Mughals. You read something here. Okay, then again you will come back to somewhere here, Magadas, and read something here. So it will you are reading in piecemeal approach. This will not give you clarity. Okay. Now if, if you go from here to there, you should be able to temporally sense it. Then what happens? You see, the moment you are reading the statement, temporally it will not make sense to you what this person is saying. Getting it? That that crux, try to catch that crux. Okay, anyways. Coming back to this, shall we start? All right. So the first is physical settings. Okay. Now I will tell you a trick. Uh, this is the first trick. Okay. How many of you people know to draw the states inside India? Okay. I thought you people are drawing with me. Okay. You should know this. Now, let us say that they ask you, if I draw a line from Delhi to Hyderabad, which are the cities that I can meet? Can you answer or not? If they tell you, Telangana is bordering which many states? Can you tell or not? How many states are bordering Nepal? Can you tell or not? Okay. If I start from Manipur and if I walk till Tamil Nadu, how many shortest states I can pass? Can you tell or not? This is the break or this is the trick to solve all the Indian mapping questions. Such questions. Okay. So you should practice this. You should know how to do this. All right. So do. Practice. I'll go a little slowly. Just practice once. Okay. You know to draw the India map, right? Ah. So the moment you get the question paper, draw this in the question paper. Okay, don't draw it off in the OMR. All right, please draw. Don't draw behind the OMR and all, or in your alt ticket. Please don't do that. Do, don't draw in the alt ticket and go and all. Don't do all those mistakes. When you get the question paper, draw it with a pencil in your uh, question paper itself. Okay, that that will save you a lot of time. And this is the hack. Don't tell anyone, but this is the hack. If I, a lot of people when they tell they announce it in YouTube, UPSC will see it and that will also be changed. Okay. So there are some things you should not tell openly. Not that you should not help your friend, help your friend, but don't tell it openly such that even they change the tricks.
so they can also ask you this river flows through so many states even then you can if you know where it rises you can just see where all it can flow you will get the answer so it helps you in a lot of ways okay having this knowledge of writing the india map with states <clears throat> uh, online guys i i'll keep answering your doubts whatever doubts you have you, you, you people can uh, put it in the chat box okay how how do they uh, go here how do they teach here like they sit and dictate to you or something no one writes huh dictate who will dictate i will not dictate but okay i'll go fast but you keep jotting down i think you got the aptitude by now to keep jotting it down okay hmm? dictating is waste of time now <coughs> because if i dictate instead of telling 10 points i'll tell you only 2 3 points so that will be a waste of time <coughs> Polity, economy, modern India, or history as such. I'll not tell modern India this thing because I always study it as one chunk, one flow of chronology. Okay, polity, history, modern India, and economy. I'm sorry, polity, economy, modern India, and environment. These four chapters almost closely will come to 50 questions. Okay, in UPSC. So I have a very good knack on these four subjects: polity, economy, history. Okay, that's ancient, medieval, and uh, modern. Okay and uh, environment okay last year the uh, theme has broken he has stopped asking institutions reports and uh, what's that uh, huh i mean no no environment i'm talking yes he stopped climate change ka questions ah uh, species ka question climate change ka question wo sab chala gaya hai abhi this, now they are going back to the basics uh, which of the following belongs to the same species Okay, they'll give you four and ask you, okay, these two or these two. They are going back to the basics. Okay, so have a very good uh, uh, knowledge of that four kingdoms that you have. Okay, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. These are the five kingdoms that we have, right? Have a good knowledge of that. Don't try to buy art, but know what are what comes under these Monera, Protista, Fungi, Animalia, and Plantae. Okay, for example, in Plantae you have Bryophyta, okay, Peridophyta, then plants. Okay, so know what are this where does mosses come where does ferns come you should have a knowledge of this because last year they have started they will continue okay they are going back to the basics in environment because that got saturated now asking about climate change asking about application of uh, this thing institutions everything is done now okay but these four subjects are what will fetch you good marks okay these four subjects should not be neglected under any, under any circumstances okay now uh, i'll draw this slowly okay you can uh, take my approach or you can use your own way of doing it whatever is comfortable but in the exam when they give you the uh, question paper and they tell you start okay in a matter of 30 seconds you should do this and keep not more than 30 seconds then everyone is seeing the questions and you are doing the map there that should not happen okay then you are putting yourself under pressure because every second is important there the moment they give and tell you start in 30 seconds finish this and then start reading okay so that aptitude you should develop i'll just teach you how to go about it Okay, I'll start. I am from Karnataka, so I start from here. <laughs> right, but you can do it from anywhere you want. So this is how I start. You can do it with me if you want to. This is Kerala. Right. Here, this is Tamil Nadu. Fine. Shall I proceed? If I do it slowly, that's what I'll forget. Huh. Okay, this is Andhra Pradesh.
ठीक है कर्नाटक केरला तमिलनाडु आंध्र प्रदेश डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज की पॉइंटर्स लाइक आई ड्रॉ फ्रॉम इयर लाइक दिस जस्ट वन लाइन दिस गैप आई जस्ट फील इट लाइक दिस लाइक दैट की पॉइंटर्स ओके मार्कर्स दिस इज डन सो दिस इज हाउ आई फिन इट देन आई डू वेस्ट बेंगाल सी फर्स्ट दिस इज सिक्किम राइट दिस इज सिक्किम बिकॉज वेन यूर ड्रॉइंग यू हैव टू ड्रॉ एक्यूरेटली ओके छत्तीसगढ़ इज बॉर्डरिंग तेलंगाना नेचुरली एंड यू डोंट पुट इट देन दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम ठीक है सो दिस इज सिक्किम नाउ आई कंप्लीट वेस्ट बेंगाल this is west bengal okay so does west bengal and assam border one another yes or no yes theek hai does sikkim and uh, assam has border do sikkim and assam have border theek hai so be clear when you are drawing that's why i am drawing it slowly now you are seeing ठीक है चलो कंटिन्यू दिस इज बिहार दिस इज झारखंड ओके एंड जस्ट ड्रॉ लाइन लाइक दिस दिस बिकम्स ओडिशा इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट एक्जैक्टली बट द शेप इज नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस स्पेशली इट शुड कम समवेयर देयर दैट इज व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर मी ओके एंड द बॉर्डरिंग शुड बी प्रॉपर ठीक है सो दिस इज बिहार झारखंड एंड दिस इज ओडिशा Done. Complete Telangana. Okay, this is Telangana. Fine. Do the Chhattisgarh. This is Chhattisgarh. Maharashtra, somewhere in between. I mean, somewhere like this. Okay, this is Maharashtra. Okay, this is Gujarat. From that same line, I am taking from here only. Here, leave a gap. UP as border with Chhattisgarh. Don't forget, leave a gap when you are doing Madhya Pradesh. Don't go and plug it to Jharkhand. Okay, don't club this to Jharkhand. Give a gap so that UP Uttar Pradesh as border with Chhattisgarh. ठीक है? Done? Yes. Ah. With what? Yes, yes, it has. It has. Okay. Ah, it is too. I mean, I have not done it properly, but yes, it has. It, it doesn't have. Doesn't have, is it? Just check once in the internet. Uh, just check once in the internet. You check, okay? It is there, ah? Huh? No, no. I mean, map me. It's not there. Just check it once in the internet because map me. Thoda. Hmm. Who's checking? It's there. I mean, yes means what? that is 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 the telangana sharing border with odisha yes Sh sure right ha ah, theek hai isliye theek <laughs> hai uh where was i itna ho gaya gujarat is done maharashtra is gone madhya pradesh is done theek hai now complete rajasthan bring like this finish this this is rajasthan This is Uttarakhand. Punjab. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, once again. Here it should come like this. Punjab.
Haryana and Himachal Pradesh. Now we have got Ladakh also, so we can just mark it like this. Okay. Coming to Assam, shall I go to northeast? Look, from here, Bengal border, it goes like this, comes like this, touches this. Okay, this is Assam. One second, yeah. Kya hua? Uh -huh. I mean, okay, what do I do? This one, right? This one. Like this. Okay? This is fine? Okay. Now come to Assam. Okay. So, see, Meghalaya does not share any border with Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Nagaland or Mizoram. Getting it? Because Assam is covering the entire Meghalaya. Okay. So, now just add lines and go. This is Arunachal Pradesh, this is Nagaland, this is Manipur and this is Mizoram. Just add one more line, this, this becomes Tripura. Okay, Tripura, Mizoram. This is Meghalaya. Okay, that's all. This completes. <laughs> oh, minor minor mistakes you try to I mean correct it on your own because the more you practice you will get perfect in that. I am just giving you a rough idea of how to go about it. But this should get completed in 30 seconds. So practice this. You don't don't think that this only helps in geography or mapping a question, you will be amazed. A lot of things you will coming back here only you will be seeing. So make sure that you do this. Okay, so this is about uh, the spatial sense of Indian mapping. Okay, the next is coming to the factual aspects. The next, let us do Himalayas. Okay, we are doing physical settings. Let us do Himalayas. Okay, <clears throat> I'll, I'll keep telling you the facts, make sure that you keep writing down the facts, whatever that uh, I keep telling you, okay, as much as possible. Okay, so what are Himalayas? Are Himalayas old fold, fold mountains or young fold mountains? Okay, they are young fold mountains. Why are they called young? Why is it they are called young? Nothing, it because it belongs to the youngest geological time scale called tertiary period. Okay, tertiary period starts from 65 million years ago. Okay, from 65 million years up to today, whatever mountains are born are known as young fold mountains. Okay, so Himalayas is one, Rockies, Andes, and Alps. Okay, Rockies, Andes, and Alps. All these are young fold mountains because they all belong to this time period, tertiary period. Okay. Another word for young is alpine. Whenever they say alpine mountains, it again means the same thing, young fold mountains. Okay? So, do not get confused when they use the term alpine, they are young itself. 
ठीक है नेक्स्ट वॉट आ टाइप ऑफ रॉक्स आर दीज मेड अप ऑफ आर दे मेड अप ऑफ सेडिमेंट्री रॉक्स और इग्नियस रॉक्स और मेटामोर्फिक रॉक्स प्रिडोमिनेटली ऑल द थ्री विल ऑलवेज बी देर ओके प्रिडोमिनेटली वॉट आर दे मेड अप ऑफ वेरी गुड दे आर मेनली मेड अप ऑफ सेडिमेंटरी रॉक्स ओके वाई एनी फोल्ड माउंटेन इज नथिंग बट फोल्डिंग ऑफ सेडिमेंट्स ओके एनी फोल्ड माउंटेन इफ यू टेक इट इज ऑलवेज फोल्डिंग ऑफ द सेडिमेंट्स दैट क्रिएट द माउंटेन्स ठीक है Are there fossils in Himalayas? Are there fossils in Himalayas? If the statement is given, you should say yes. Okay, because common sense says there has to be some fossil fuels. Okay, so fossils are there. That means fossil fuels also can be there. Okay. Are there? Is Himalayas mineral rich? Okay. <laughs> Himalayas is mineral rich, but you cannot mine. Okay, they are fossil rich, but you cannot mine. Okay, fossil fuels there because its biodiversity is very high and the terrain is very rough. Okay. How was Himalayas formed? You told that Himalayas is still rising. Yes, it is rising. Why are they rising still? Okay. What? What? Be more specific. Very good. It Himalayas is C and C convergence. Okay, it is C and C. Okay, that is continent and continent convergence. Convergence can be of three types. C and C, O and C, and O and O. Okay, these are the three types of convergence: ocean plate and ocean plate, ocean and continent, continent and continent. Okay, what is the speciality about C and C? Urals. Have you heard Urals? Very good. The most important aspect is in C and C, nothing will go down. O and O, one denser plate will always go down or subside. Okay. O and C, ocean plate is always uh, dense, so ocean plate will go down. Okay. C and C, nothing is going to go down. Okay. So the first thing you should know is in C and C there is no subduction. The second, if there is no subduction, can there be any volcanic eruptions? Do, have you seen any volcanoes in Himalayas? How volcanoes happen? See, when one sub one plate is subducting, one is going in the interiors. It is going to melt. When this is going to melt, the magma here will start coming up, and it starts erupting. Okay? Now something has to go down to melt. Now in C and C, nothing is going down. So where will volcano come? Now don't ask me why and all. <laughs> Then it becomes a very big class. Okay? So in C and C, one there is no subduction. Two there is no volcanic eruptions. And three, there is fusion of continents. There is fusion of continents. And amongst the three, uh, we know that according to plate tectonics, where does earthquakes and volcanoes form? Along the plate boundaries. Plate tectonics says along the plate boundaries are the places where earthquakes as well as volcanic eruptions are seen. Correct. Now, if I take these three, where do you see the greatest seismic seismic uh, earthquakes? Is it in this or this or this? It is in this. That is why Himalayas. You take the earthquake; it will always reach 8.5, 8.6. Japan; it will not go to such high. Yes, the frequency is high. That is, every day there can be earthquakes there, but every day it will not go to 8 magnitude, 8.5 magnitude, 7. It will not go like that. It will be some 2, 3, 4 magnitude. It will be there. Okay, but in Nepal or India, if it happens, things will go very bad. Okay, because the magnitude is very high. Why? Because the convergence is C and C. Japan, the convergence is O and O. Getting it? So the seismicity increases as I move from year to year. Okay, why is because see, when something goes down, the pressure reduces. Okay, when nothing is going down, both are fighting. Pressure will increase much more high. Okay, so the breakage of rocks is greater. Okay, so this is about Himalayas. Another C and C convergence example is Ural Mountains. Okay, Ural Mountains long back was a convergence between Eurasian plate and I mean European plate and Asian plate. Today, what entire thing we call as Eurasia before were two different things. They came together to form Eurasia. Hmm. Japan is uh, Japanese plate is a oceanic plate. Uh, Pacific is a oceanic plate, so and oh, okay.
<coughs> all right next aerial view of himalayas this is how it looks Okay, this is the aerial view of Himalayas. Some call it vertical division of Himalayas also. The name does not matter. Vertical division of Himalayas. Okay, the first is Tethys or some people also call it Trans Himalayas. Okay, some also call it Trans Himalayas. Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas and Shivaliks. Okay. Hmm. I mean you want to know the uh, literal meaning of suture? Suture means stitch, it looks like this. From top if I look, suture means it is looking like a stitching, okay, two things coming and joining. In reality, this part is Eura Euro I mean Eura Eurasian plate, this part is Indian plate. So both have converged to form a stitch, suture, okay? <coughs> which unfortunately I do not have time to explain more, <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, now look, now if you are if looking at this, what are these? What are this ITS, the central main thrust, central boundary thrust, high frontal fault, what are these? What? See mountains are standing here, this is one mountain, this is another, this is, are you able to visualize, right? These are mountains that are standing, but what are these lines between the mountains? Sorry? Valleys are there, yes, between two mountains there will always be valleys, but what are these lines? Why am I naming, I could have named this as valley only, why am I waiting it? What is this thrust? No fault, faults are mountains, huh? Someone told, it is fault lines, okay, these are nothing but fault lines, okay. You know what is fault, correct? Uh, my intuition will always go to explain basics, then I control myself because I do not have time, okay. Fault is? Whenever there is a crack, okay, let us say that this is a flat surface. Now there are four cracks. Crack in geography is also known as fracture. Okay? So whenever there is a displacement along the fracture, it is known as a fault. Okay? Whenever there is a displacement along the fracture, it is known as a fault. So these are all fault lines. See, when two plates came like this, okay, before the standing up of the sediments happen, okay, there will be breakage or not. See for example, if I take a normal sheet, if I do the sheet like this, it will easily fold, okay. Now if I take this table, okay, and if I should, I mean I can't do it, but let us say that I compress this, 
before folding, will there be cracks or not? That cracks are these, okay? All right, these are fault lines. Now tell me, are they reverse fault line or normal fault lines? Okay, they are reverse fault lines, okay? Again, no basics, reverse fault lines. Normal fault line is fault line created because of tensional forces, okay? Whenever the fault lines are created because of compressional forces, it is known as reverse fault line. Here there is compression or not? From this side Indian plate, from that side Eurasian plate. So there is compression, hence there is faults. Hence it is known as reverse fault lines. <coughs> Getting it? Let's talk a little bit about Trans Himalayas. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Trans Himalayas. Every, everything a little bit. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Karakoram. Ladakh range Jasper. Kailash Okay, these four put together are known as trans Himalayas or trans Himalayan ranges. Okay, one is Karakoram. You have heard of this, correct? Gilgit Baltistan. You are telling me that Gilgit Baltistan is nothing but the Karakoram range. Okay. Next to that is the Ladakh range. Okay. Then comes the Zaskar range. These three are in India. The next range is Kailash range, which is not in India, but in Nepal. Karakoram is famous, see it is all the four ranges have the composition very unique from the rest of Himalayas, okay. Their, for, when I say their composition it means both age as well as the rocks are very different from the rocks of greater Himalayas, okay. That is why they are calling trans Himalayas, trans means transcend, okay. Whenever they use the word transcend that means it does not belong to it, it transcends it. When they say trans Gangetic Plains that place does not belong to Gangas, it transcends Gangas, okay? So trans Himalayas means it transcends Himalayas, okay? So whatever rocks that you find here are more closer to Euro Eurasian plate than Indian plate, okay? That is one. Next, Karakoram range is famous for glaciers, okay? Karakoram range is famous for glaciers. Remo, Baifo, Baltoro, Siachen, Nubra, very good, Nubra Glacier, okay, Remo, Baifo, Baltoro, Nubra, Siachen, okay, these are some of the glaciers of in Karakoram, okay. More glaciers means more rivers and all these rivers go and join Indus only, okay. Indus is the main river that flows through Karakoram, okay. So all these glaciers will feed Indus. What are the tributaries that feed Indus? We will discuss in the next class that is rivers, okay. Don't want now. <clears throat> the next, Ladakh range. Okay, it is cold desert of India. Why is it called so? Because it falls in the rain shadow region of greater Himalayas. 
okay, rain shadow region of greater Himalayas. Diosai and Depsang. Have you heard these names? Diosai and Depsang. These are two plains there. Diosai plains and Depsang plains. It one was in news. Okay, between the, there was a skirmish between India and China, right? Yes. Okay. That is lakes. Fingers is lakes. Okay. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. Okay, Diosai plains and Depsang plains. These are the two plains in uh, Ladakh. What are the two lakes, salt lakes there? So, Very good. So Morari, T So. So Morari and Pongyang So. So Morari and Pongyang So. These are the two salt water lakes. The five fingers is Pongyang So. Okay, that is what is in news because of the skirmishes between India and China. Okay. Somarari is completely in India, it has no issue with Somarari. Okay. This is in Ladakh. Kardungla, okay, a pass called Kardungla is located in Ladakh. Kardungla. Okay, next, Zaskar. Zaskar Fotula, P H O T U, Fotula Pass. La means pass only, but anyways, you write on Fotula Pass. Zaskar is sandwiched with Greater Himalayas. Zaskar is sandwiched with Greater Himalayas. Next, Kailash, not that important because it is not in India, but it gives rise to three important rivers, okay, Satlaj, Indus and Brahmaputra, okay, Satlaj, Indus and Brahmaputra. We will come back to the rivers tomorrow, so that, that is enough for this. <coughs> The next is okay. The next is the Greater Himalayas. Okay, this is how this is Greater Himalayas. Karakoram, Ladakh, Zaskar, Kailash. Okay. Look at Greater Himalayas. Greater Himalayas is one continuous stretch. Okay, it is not broken into small small ranges. It is one continuous stretch. The true Himalayas is actually the Greater Himalayas. Okay, it is one continuous stretch running for 2500 kilometers. One continuous stretch. Am I going fast or is it fine? Fine with everyone, right? Okay. One continuous stretch, 2500 kilometers. Namcha Barwa to Naga Parbat. Okay. Namcha Barwa to Naga Parbat. That is the extent of it. Namcha Barwa, N A M C H A, Namcha Barwa to Naga Parbat. P A R B A T Parbat. Okay. Jojilla Pass. Jojilla, come somewhere here. Jojilla Pass is in Greater Himalayas. This is one of the highest mountains in the world. Okay, you take Mount Everest, you take K2 Goodwin Austin, you take uh, Kanchenjunga, whatever peaks, the world's first 15 peaks you take, it's all here only. Okay, the reason is this is, I told you, which is the most aggressive of convergence? 
C and C convergence. Okay, that is what is happening here. C and C convergence is happening. When convergence is more, uplifting also will be, folding will also be more. Okay, that is why you find highest peaks of the world in Greater Himalayas. Okay, I told you, just understand the philosophy, more nothing else is needed. Average altitude of Greater Himalayas is 4500 meters. Okay, average altitude. Highest is obviously 8800, average is 4500 meters. Okay. If I take the south facing part of Greater Himalayas and the north facing part of Greater Himalayas, can you visualize south facing and the north facing? Where do you see vegetation? Okay. So when there is vegetation, the slope is steep or gray, uh, gradual. Can you link? Okay. So south facing is vegetation and south facing the slopes are very gradual. Okay. Whereas the exactly opposite happens in the north. There is no vegetation and the slopes are very steep. Okay. Why it is vegetation is sun facing. South is sun facing. That's why it is vegetation. That side is dark. Okay. Hence there is no vegetation. And vegetation always holds the soil. Because it holds the soil, the mass movements are slow and hence the slope is gradual. If there is no vegetation, there is lot of mass movements. Hence, the slope becomes steep. Good. Nice. <clears throat> All right. So, this is about Greater Himalayas. Next, we will go to the Lesser Himalayas. Okay. Lesser Himalayas. I will draw it in yellow. Peer Panjal, Dauladar, one Okay, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Peer Panjal. Dauladar. Ratanpir, Nagatibba, Mazuri. This is Lesser Himalayas in West. Okay, this is Lesser Himalayas in the West. Lesser Himalayas is also found here. One, two. Monpa, Abor, Mishmi, Nishi and Nagas. Okay. This is western part of Lesser Himalayas. This is the eastern part of Lesser Himalayas. Okay. Yeah. Monpa, Dafla, Abor, Ho, oh, no, sorry, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. First is Dafla, then. Monpa doesn't come. Where is where does Monpa come? 
One, one sec, one sec, one sec. The, yes, you are right, but Dafla Abor Mishmi Nishi Aya. Anyone has NCRT? Indian Geography ka? No one has? You have? No? No, it will not be there in the map. Monpa. Okay. Dafla comes here for sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Just write it down. Okay. Dafla comes there for sure. <coughs> Dafla Abor Mishmi Nishi Nagas. So this is about lesser Himalayas. The yeah, then I'll, I'll come back to that. Just know, lesser Himalayas are mainly made up of very loose sedimentary rocks. Okay, lesser Himalayas, both the places. Yeah, got it right. Yeah. Ah, write down Mo, Mon, this is correct. Monpa, two is Dafla. Okay. Abor, Mishmi, Nishi, Nagas. Abor, Mishmi, Nishi, Nagas. Thank you. Uh, this is in the NCRT. Monpa, Dafla, Abor, Mishmi, Nishi, and Nagas. <coughs> That is just add of Dafla in the midstream. I forgot Dafla there. Okay. Coming back to what was I doing? Uh, lesser Himalayas are made up of loosely held sedimentary rocks. That is why lesser Himalayas is very, very, uh, you know, accustomed to this landslides. Okay. In Uttarakhand, whatever landslides happen, or if you go to Brahmaputra, I mean the uh, Assam Himalayas. If you go there, okay, the landslides are very common. I will come back to this again, but just write down here, lesser Himalayas are accustomed to landslides because they are made up of loosely held sediments. Okay, they are made up of loosely held sediments. All right, then, then there is something called Dera Dun. Okay, they use this Dun, Kota Dun, Dera Dun. Okay, Duns are nothing but See, usually the valleys are like this, yes or no? Okay, in this diagram you saw, look at the valleys. These are, the, someone told that this is valley, see? The valley is running like this, latitudinally, okay? But in lesser Himalayas, there will be some that run like this. It's running how? Longitudinally, okay? These are known as dunes. Dunes are longitudinal valleys, okay? Dunes are longitudinal valleys. There are dune, Kota dune, okay, all these words are longitudinal valleys. Okay. The last is Shivaliks. Okay, the last is Shivaliks. They are formed by derived sediments. Derived sediments. Derived from what? What do you mean by this derived sediments? It means sediments that are brought by the rivers from greater and lesser Himalayas. Okay, so whatever folding has happened in Shiva lakes, they are sediments that are brought by the rivers from the greater and lesser Himalayas. Hence, they are known as derived sediments. So, if they say greater, lesser, and Shiva lakes, which has the youngest sediment? Which will have the youngest sediment? Okay, it will always be Shiva lakes. Shiva lakes is the youngest among the entire Himalayas. Okay, because it was last to form. Okay, so. One, they are derived sediments. Two, they are youngest amongst the three or youngest amongst the all. Everyone. Okay. Average altitude is 1000 meters. Average altitude is 1000 meters. 
lesser Himalayas ka you can write 2000, okay, lesser Himalayas average altitude is 2000. Yes. See, this is what the, this is where you should be very, very careful. One, okay, I will, I will answer that question. But when you are reading, let, let's say that this doubt came, is it important for you to have clarity on that? <laughs> but in reality, it is not actually. See, if the statement says, Shivalik's as no, Shivalik's is the youngest formed uh, mountains, but as no anyway in relation to the convergence happening, will it be correct? Common sensely speaking, somehow at least 0.1 percent also some, some of the connection will be there. Are you getting it? That is why. Do not try to break it into black or white. Let it be grey. Got it? But the answer is, we cannot tell that there is no connection at all, but predominantly the sediments are from uh, greater and lesser Himalayas and not from Tethys Sea. Okay? But it is not always that there is no one sediment also from Tethys Sea. There will be some sediment from Tethys Sea. Okay? <coughs> All right. Uh, Shivalix is known as Churiya Ghat in Nepal. Churiya Ghat, C H U R I A. Okay, Churiya Ghat in Nepal. Dudwa in UP. In UP they call it Dudwa. Hmm. Okay. In Shiva lakes, they have undergone a lot of deforestation. That deforestation has created a lot of erosion. This they call it as okay, Chaz zero. I don't know how to pronounce it. Chaz, cause, write down whatever it is. But they call this okay. <coughs> Getting it? Done? Okay, now let us, 5 minutes, let us look at the horizontal division of Himalayas. Okay, I will just give you the horizontal division of Himalayas, but before we do that, one second, I forgot this. Okay, see, usually in newspapers and in normal parlance, this side is known as Western Himalayas, this side is known as Eastern Himalayas. What is this called? Okay, this is known as Purvanchal. Okay, don't forget. Whenever they say Purvanchal, this from Arunachal Pradesh up to Mizoram. Okay, the north to south orientation of Himalayas from Arunachal Pradesh to Mizoram is known as Purvanchal. Okay. Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram, four states. Okay, four states. First, Arunachal Pradesh, okay, important mountain there is, I mean within this particular Purvanchal they have divided, okay, Purvanchal of Arunachal Pradesh is known as Patkai, okay, it is known as Patkai, Patkai, Apatani tribes stay here, okay, important tribes here is Apatani, A-P-A-T-A-N-I, Apatani. Okay, spelling doesn't matter, right? No, no, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, next, zero valley. Okay, important valley here is zero. Z E R O, Z I R O. Sorry. Okay, zero valley. Z I R O. It is actually famous for wine making, but that wine is very different from the wine you are thinking. Okay, they make a very different wine, but zero valley. Okay, Z I R O. Next, this is the only place. In India, where they grow rice on mountains. We know rice is not grown in mountains. Why? It needs stagnant water. One, it is water intensive and you need the water to be stagnant, right? So, they grow a very uh, interestingly, they grow rice in uh, Patkai, okay? Fine, this is about uh, the Patkai part. The next is Nagaland. 
okay nagas different types of nagas are here all right but nagas are the main uh, this thing tribes um, saramatti is the highest peak mount saramatti s a r a it doesn't matter s a r a m a t i also you write t t i also you write okay saramatti mount saramatti is the highest peak on bill festival is important here next manipur manipur india's floating national park okay india's floating national park kibul lamb jaw india's floating national park kibul lamb jaw sangai deer okay another important thing is sangai s a n g a i sangai deer it's critically endangered the last is mizoram okay yes lushai mountains okay always the names will always mask the name of the tribe okay use that key lushai l u s h a i lushai mountains it's also known as lushai mountains highest peak is blue mountains highest peak is blue mountains okay that's all okay manipur you can write kokis and meetis these are the important tribes meetis actually are in reality not tribes but there are two communities there kokis who live in mountains they are tribes meetis are the dominant community that live in plains okay kokis and meetis m e i t i t e s meetis mizoram is lushai yeah ha ah, you can write lok tak lek yes na ye i didn't understand okay uh, lok tak is a centripetal drainage lok tak lek is in manipur you can write it but i'm not sure of the centripetal drainage okay centripetal drainage uh, is one gulf of kutch okay the luni river will go and drain in gulf of kutch that is one inland drainage in india sambar is a lake inland drainage i'm not sure okay <coughs> so this is uh, purvanchal okay purvanchal is separated from peninsular plateau at a range called barel range okay this is barel range this barel range separates this actually is a peninsular plateau don't don't think so why is sir telling here is this is actually a part of peninsular i'll come back to this but this peninsular plateau is separated from himalayas or purvanchal by a range here called barel range okay barel range no need of any break right can i proceed with live you people need break let me know if you need break <coughs> all right now for 5 minutes let us do the horizontal division of himalayas <coughs> Meghalaya plateau is Meghalaya plateau is peninsular plateau. See Meghalaya plateau. Okay, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll come. I'll talk about peninsular plateau. Don't worry. Okay, it is not. Uh,
ठीक है नाउ आई कवर मोर ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज इन हिमालय इन दिस डिविजन आई टॉक मोर अबाउट ह्यूमन एस्पेक्ट वी स्पोक अबाउट फिजिकल एस्पेक्ट इन द वर्टिकल डिविजन राइट सो नाउ आई टॉक अबाउट द्यूमन एस्पेक्ट Come again. Repeat what? Ah. It separates Himalayas from Peninsula Plateau. Okay. I'll get to that. After once I do the Peninsula Plateau, you'll get to know. Okay. Now, talk about Kashmir Himalayas. Okay. We'll talk about Kashmir Himalayas. Um, what is the main mode of economy? It's what's it? Lumbering. Okay, lum not tourism. The first important aspect there is lumbering. Then comes tourism. Okay. Why lumbering? Softwood. Okay, softwood is available there, especially pine trees. Okay, pine trees. But there is one special tree that is available in Kashmir Himalayas itself. Okay, these trees are very very famous. The second is mode is tourism, obviously, you can write that. Two important lakes, Dal Lake and Ular Lake. Okay, Dal Lake and Ular Lake is two important lakes. Next, have you heard Karevas? Okay, very fertile soils. Okay, they are known as lacustrine deposits. They may use this keyword, that's why I am telling you. They are known as lacustrine deposits. Okay, lacustrine means ancient lake deposits, the bed of the ancient lake. See, lake's bed will be fertile or not? The bed of the lake will be fertile, correct? Now, if I remove all the water from the lake and if I start growing there, will the crops grow nicely or not? Okay, that is what is Karevas, but ancient lake. Okay, lacustrine means ancient lake uh, deposits. All right. What is it they grow here? Zaffron and Basmati rice. Okay, Zaffron and Basmati rice. Okay, some places you can find coal deposits. Coal. Okay, some places you can find coal deposits. Come again. That is actually controversial, that is why I did not tell that, they will also not ask. Okay, uh, tertiary coal is mainly found in northeast. Okay, northeast mein jo whatever coal you find is tertiary. Uh, in the eastern plateau and hills, that is, I will tell you when we get there. Gondwana coal that they call, do not confuse. Here, coal is found. <coughs> that is enough. That is Kashmir Himalayas. Let us go to, the next is Kumaon Himalayas. Okay, Kumaon Himalayas. Two states are there here. What are the two states? Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Okay. So first, Himachal Himalayas or Himachal Pradesh. You can write that. Himachal Himalayas. First, I mean, Kumaon Himalayas can be divided into two types or two branches. Kumaon Himalayas can be divided into two branches. Himachal Himalayas and Uttarakhand Himalayas. Or they also call it Garbal Himalayas. Himachal Himalayas, the highest point is called Sheila, S H I E L A, Sheila. Then 
there are three important places Kullu, Manali and Kangra. Okay, the, all the three come in Himachal Himalayas. Kullu, Manali and Kangra. Okay, Uttarkhand is also known as Garhwal. See, they can ask you which of the following tribes fall where and they can ask you their Kumaon. Okay, you should know. All these places will always reflect the names of the tribes. Okay, so see for the keywords. Now, uh, Uttarkhand is Garhwal Himalayas because obviously Garhwal tribes are there. Uh, it is famous for glaciers. One, it is famous for glaciers. Yamunotri, Gangotri, all these things are there only. Okay. Next is, it is known as Dharma Bhumi. Okay, it is known as Dharma Bhumi because all the Prayags, okay, Prayags, Kedarnath, Badrinath, okay, all these places are there, so it is known as Dharma Bhumi. Okay. The main mode of economy here is tourism. Uh, I mean, in the entire uh, Kumon Himalayas, is mainly tourism, and that too it is spiritual tourism. All right. <clears throat> this is about Kumon Himalayas. The next is Nepal Himalayas, which we are not interested, but we want to know Sikkim Himalayas. Okay. Sikkim Himalayas, when I say, you take the state of Sikkim, and what is one more state? State of Sikkim plus West Bengal, okay, northern parts of West Bengal, the Darjeeling Himalayas part. Okay, so it is Sikkim plus Darjeeling Himalayas. Put together is Sikkim, Sikkim Himalayas. Okay, what is the main mode of economy? Tourism not is there, but not that much. Tea, okay. Tea plantations. Tea plantations. Lepcha and Botias. These are the two tribes here. Lepchas and Botias. Okay. Duars are very fertile valleys where tea plantations are present. Duars. Okay, Duars are fertile valleys where they grow the tea plantation. Okay. Just because we are in this context, where are tea grown and where is coffee grown? Yeah, 70 percent of India supply comes from Karnataka or let us say predominantly the coffee is grown in Western Ghats. Okay. Tea is grown in Himalayas. All right. But both are, what is common in both? Both are mixed in milk. <laughs> both are commercial crops, yes. But both are grown in slopey regions or mountains. That is the commonality. Okay? Both are grown in slopey regions. Why are they grown in slopey regions? Because both don't like, both like water. But both like moving water. They don't like stagnant water. Okay? They want high humidity, but they don't want the water to stand there. Okay, that's why they are grown on slopes, so that the water keeps moving down. Okay, then only difference between coffee and tea is, tea requires cool temperature. Okay, coffee requires relatively higher temperature. Okay, that is why coffee is grown in the Western Ghats part, tea is grown in the Himalayas part. Okay. Okay, coming back to. Uh, Sikkim Himalayas, okay. Kanchenjunga is the highest point. Kanchenjunga is the highest point. Tista, okay. River Tista is present here. Okay. Assam Himalayas. Go to Assam Himalayas. What do they grow here? Very good. Tea. 
okay they grow tea see assam is a very interesting place it comes under all the three physical feature assam as himalayan part assam as brahmaputra plains that is plains part assam also comes under peninsular plateau okay <clears throat> so in the himalayas part of assam they grow tea okay in the plains in the plains of assam they grow jute and rice in the plains of assam they grow jute and rice whereas in the plateau part okay whereas in the plateau part they rare a very special type of silk what is this silk called muga silk okay muga silk actually assam has a gi indicator for this muga muga silk okay now look if if i take all this kashmir kumaon nepal sikkim all these things there are two places where high levels of uh, landslides happen all right it is here and it is assam okay these are the two places where you see large scale landslides that takes place okay <clears throat> that's why in uttarakhand you see so much of landslides and in kashmir himalayas there are tribes called gujjars bakarwalas what who karewas there is a tribe called karewas there also oh nice okay karewas tribe theek hai all right so this finishes himalayas all right i have tried to cover most more or less what comprehensively i can that should be it done any doubts okay unfortunately indian geography has a lot of facts and they ask facts okay it's only indian geography that the facts come in a prelim so i am not i can't help it okay the next the next is peninsular plateau okay the next is peninsular plateau so this 1 2 3 4 5 5 is what is peninsular plateau okay so someone had asked barel range so now you know this is purvanchal this is peninsular plateau theek okay? hai both are separated by barel range
can i start okay first is northeast plateau and hills first is northeast plateau and hills some people call it meghalaya hills some people call it shillong plateau okay meghalaya plateau shillong plateau or northeast plateau and hills all means the same okay this is part of uh, peninsula plateau fine so when i say northeast plateau and hills this part it has okay it has 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay garo kasi jentia mikir okay this is mikir and this is karbi anglong okay all this five put together you can call it northeast plateau and hills when the, they put only three together this is known as meghalaya plateau okay meghalaya plateau is plateau in meghalaya political division of meghalaya okay these three come in meghalaya these two come in where assam i told you assam has himalayan part plains part as well as plateau part okay this is the plateau part of assam mikir and karbi anglong so when they when i say northeast plateau and hills or northeastern part of peninsula plateau it is all the five okay garo kasi jentia mikir hills and karbi anglong okay highest point is no crek highest point here is no crek no k r e k no crek Okay, it's in Garo Hills. Highest rainfall is received in Kasi. Okay, Mountain Ram is in Kasi. Okay, highest rainfall is in Kasi Hills. K H A S I Kasi Hills. Okay, why? Because it is a funnel-shaped valley. Okay, that explanation is not needed now. But highest rainfall is in Kasi Hills. Okay, Mountain Ram. As he told, the place is Mountain Ram. But anyways, the next is C. Is Peninsula Plateau mineral rich or not? First of all, let me. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, understand one thing. Peninsula Plateau is part of Panthalisa. Is this correct? Yes. What is Panthalisa? There, this is our. There was one super continent. This who? This oh sorry, Pangaea. <laughs> Okay, okay. Pangaea, Panthalisa. This broke into Laurasia and Gondwana. Okay, this Gondwana part, okay, is what Peninsula Plateau belongs to. Okay, so this entire supercontinent was actually very mineral rich. Okay, this 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 part is very mineral rich, and hence because our chunk of Peninsula Plateau is coming from that Gondwana land, this entire Peninsula Plateau itself is more very mineral rich rocks. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so uh, here the minerals found here are mainly it is one is uh, tertiary coal, okay? Tertiary coal. Tertiary is the name of the period, okay? Sixty-five million years ago, I told right. That is tertiary, tertiary coal, and uranium, okay? Tertiary coal and uranium. okay that is about uh, northeast plateau and hills biodiversity is very high here okay it is uh, no crek is a biosphere reserve okay you would have you will learn it in environment or you would have learned it no crek is a biosphere reserve so biodiversity is high <coughs> next next is the second one the eastern plateau and hills okay the next is eastern plateau and hills okay mineral heartland of india okay it is known as mineral heartland of india which three states come here jharkhand chatisgarh and odisha okay very important is odisha jharkhand chatisgarh and odisha i'll give you a lot of names here unfortunately it is important you have to know 
okay, but uh, that is how it is. Jharkhand, okay, it looks something like this. There is one river that flows here. What is the name of the river? Damodar. Okay. Damodar divides Jharkhand into two parts Hazaribagh Plateau, Ranchi Plateau. Okay. Jharkhand, I am talking about the three states now. I, we are talking about Eastern Plateau and Hills. Okay. In that, we have three states Jharkhand, Odisha, and Chhattisgarh. I am talking about these three states now. Okay. Damodar is the river that separates Azaribagh Plateau from Ranchi Plateau. Azaribagh Plateau is famous for coal, coal reserves, Gondwana coal. Okay, Azaribagh is famous for Gondwana coal. I'll tell, I'll tell once again. Okay, there are places here called Jeria, Girid, Azaribagh, Dhanbad. Okay, these are all famous places in Azaribagh for Gondwana coal. Okay, Gondwana coal deposits. Okay, Ranchi Plateau is famous for iron ore reserves. Okay, Ranchi Plateau is famous for iron ore reserve. Singbom, have you heard this? Okay, it comes in Ranchi Plateau, Singbom. Next, this Ranchi Plateau is famous for rivers. Okay, good or dense network of rivers. Example. Subarna Reka, Karkai, South Koyal, Sunk. Okay, these are some of the important rivers in Ranchi Plateau. Okay. At a point here, Subarna Reka flows like this, Karkai flows like this. This point of confluence of Subarnika and Karkai is what? Jamshedpur. Okay. That point of confluence of Subarna Reka and Karkai is known as Jamshedpur or Tata Nagar is what is it called today. That is where Tisco, okay, the Tata Iron and Steel Company is located. These two, one, two. Um, uh, mineral, iron ore, iron ore reserves. Singboom, you wanted singboom, okay. There are mainly two types of industries. Okay, one is weight gaining industry, another is weight losing industry. You heard this? What is weight gaining? What, what is weight losing? Right. So, what is weight gaining? Oh, I am sorry, what is weight losing? See, if I want to make uh, or if I want to, uh, what is that, make steel, I need different, different raw materials. I need some amount of iron ore, I need some amount of coal, I need some amount of chromite, I need some amount of, let us say, other minerals. Now, if I take 2 tons of iron ore, do you think all the 2 tons will be important? No, right? There will be a lot of gang material or unwanted material. You will wash off all that things. So, uh, in the 2 ton, maybe let us say 20% uh, of the 2 tons is what is important. Such industries are known as weight losing industries where most of the raw materials have impurities. By cleaning up these impurities, everything will go and very little will be remaining. 
all right. So, such industries will always make sure that those industries are located near the raw material or the market. Okay, the industries will go near the uh, raw material because instead of getting the 20 tons of iron ore or 100 tons of iron ore to the city, if I set it up there only, I will take that particular raw material, make iron ore and then send iron ore itself to the city. Okay, so weight losing industries will always be set up in raw material region. Okay, sugar cane growing. Okay, do you think sugar cane, sugar mills will be near the sugar cane growing region or away from it? Because if I spend more time, tra tra I mean if I let sugar cane travel for more time, the sugar cane will lose sucrose content and it will become dry. Okay, so the moment I harvest it, I need to crush it to get more juice. So what I will do? Weight losing. Okay. Tisco is the best example for weight losing industries. Okay. Because see, if this is Jamshedpur, it has got water. Okay, this is Subarna Reka, this is Karkai. So it is getting water. Here is Navamundi Mines of Singbom. Okay, this is Navamundi Mines of Singbom. So this is sends iron ore. This is Jariya. Okay, Jariya sends coal. Okay, this is a railway track that goes from Mumbai to Kolkata. Okay, this is a railway track. See how strategically they have placed Jamshedpur. Okay, weight losing industries will always be placed in raw materials. Hence, all the metallurgical industry in India, not all, most of the metallurgical industries in India are located in eastern plateau and hills. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> this is the concept, you should know the concept. Okay. So, if they are given something, some industry, okay, you have not heard about that industry, does not matter, you know the place, you know what type of industry it is, if it is weight losing, if it is near the raw material, put yes. Okay. That is how it works, you do not have to know the names. Okay. <clears throat> This is about uh, Jharkhand. Singbum also has copper deposits. Okay, Singbum also has copper deposits. There is uranium also in Jharkhand. Okay, Jharkhand has uranium deposits. Where, see, this is one more trick. Wherever iron, iron ore is there, manganese will also be there. Okay, you should know that. Iron ore and manganese will always follow one another. Okay. Wherever copper is there, lead and zinc always will follow copper. Okay, so if, if I say somewhere copper is there, that means lead and zinc also will be there. Okay, the next is uh, this is about Jharkhand. Uh, here, see you people didn't ask. This, this part, this part of Peninsula Plateau actually was attached to this, long back. Okay, suddenly it was like this. Suddenly there was a fault. Okay, what is that fault? Malda, Malda fault. Okay, so know that it is known as Malda fault. Now there was a fault, and then they started moving away from one another. Then that gap that is created is known as Raj Mahal Garo Gap. Okay, this gap is created because of what? Malda fault. Okay. <coughs> Garo, you already know where Garo comes. Okay. Raj Mahal comes somewhere here. This is Raj Mahal. Raj Mahal Hills. Okay. So, this is about uh, Jharkhand, I am sorry, yeah, this is about Jharkhand, okay. Eastern Plateau and Hills is very important, so I am trying to do it properly. Next is Odisha, okay, Odisha, very beautiful state, but unfortunately it is the poorest state in India, okay. 
the richest state in India when it comes to minerals. However, the poorest state it comes when it comes to human development. Okay, it is known as resource curse. Wherever we feel resource is high, we have a perception that the development will be high, but it's actually the reverse. Resource acts always as a curse. Okay, so this is what Odisha is facing. Odisha is actually facing resource curse. Okay, next, Odisha has the largest resource of. Odisha has the largest resource of iron ore, manganese, chromite, bauxite. Look how rich they are. Okay, iron ore, manganese, chromite, and bauxite. They have the largest reserves. Odisha. Okay, biodiversity also is very high in Odisha. Okay, biodiversity is very high in Odisha. For example, you have. Panchpat Malai, Nayagad Hills, you have uh, Garjat Hills, Daring Badi Hills, Daring Badi Hills is known as Kashmir of Odisha. Okay, so these Niamgiri hills, you can write Ni Niamgiri was in use, you remember the Korn tribes, yeah, Niamgiri hills. All these hills, uh, these hills are, unfortunately they are two, their biodiversity also is rich, but underneath them the minerals also is rich, okay. So that is what is uh, this. Next. They have dense network of rivers. They have dense network of rivers. For example, Buddha Bangala, Baitarani, Mahanadi, Brahmani, Sabari. I am forgetting two more, we will do it in reverse. Okay, this is not reverse chapter, so this much is enough. These are some of the rivers. Next. Again, we go to the coast. Even the coast is very important in Odisha. Why? Correct. Girhi Mata. Uh, Girhi Mata is famous for olive ridley nesting, mass nesting. Okay. Haribadi. That's what they call, right? Haribadi, that mass nesting. Okay. Girhi Mata is a place where it's important. That's what my point is. Okay. The next is the mangroves are known as Bittarkanika. Okay, the mangroves there are known as Bittarkanika. <coughs> mangroves are known as Bittarkanika. Okay. This is with respect to Odisha. The next is Chhattisgarh. Okay, it looks like this. The northern part is known as Chhattisgarh Plains. Okay, the northern part is known as Chhattisgarh Plains. The southern part is known as Dantewada, which is part of Dandakaranya Plateau. Okay, Dantewada, which is part of Dandakaranya Plateau. You might have heard Dandakaranya, okay, infamously known for Naxal activities. Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. If I make some mistake, please overlook it. <laughs> All right. Chhattisgarh Plains, okay, is known as Rice Bowl of India. Okay. Chhattisgarh Plains is known as Rice Bowl of India. The 
by the end of the class, by the end of this topic, just remind me to tell about rocks in Peninsula Plateau. Okay, I'll, I may forget it off. Just remind me, rocks, Darwarian, uh, Kadapa, and uh, this thing. I have to talk. Okay. Um, Chhattisgarh Plains is known as rice bowl of India because there are more than 1,800 varieties of rice grown there. Okay, that is one. Apart from that, there is nothing more important. There is uh, Dalhi Rajara. Okay, there is a place called Dalhi Rajara that is famous for iron ore. Okay, that is famous for iron ore there. Spelling does not matter. Okay, right. D A L L I R A J H A R A. <coughs> this is in Chhattisgarh Plains. Coming to Dantewada. Okay, Dantewada. The highest point is Bailadila. Okay, the highest point here is Bailadila. Okay. Bailadila has purest iron ore resource in India called magnetite ores. Okay. It has a type of ore called magnetite. Emetite, magnetite, lemonite, you have heard this gradation, right? Magnetite is very high in magnetic properties. This is used in electronic uh, manufacturing. Okay. So, this is found in Bailadila. Okay. Hence, from Bailadila, there is a pipeline that goes directly to Vishakapatnam. Okay, they make slurry of this magnetite and they send it in this pipeline to Vishakapatnam. From Vishakapatnam, it goes, it is exported to Japan. Okay, that is the importance of that ore there, just for story sake. Okay, but this is Bailadila uh, in this thing, Dantewada. Okay, there is one more place called Korba. Korba, K O R B A, Korba. Okay, very famous for coal deposits. Famous for coal deposits. Okay. In Odisha, I did not tell coal, right? Uh, right down in Odisha, Talcher. In Odisha, there is a place called Talcher. T A L C H E R. Talcher. Talcher is famous for coal. I will give you two more places. Stay with me. Kionjar and Mayurbanj. Okay, these are famous for iron ore reserves. Okay, these are famous for iron ore reserves. Odisha is done, Chhattisgarh, yeah, Chhattisgarh is done, but know a little bit about this Dandakaranya Plateau, okay, Dandakaranya Plateau is a interstate plateau, okay, Dandakaranya Plateau is a interstate plateau, if I take this as Dandakaranya Plateau, okay, this is Chhattisgarh part of Dandakaranya Plateau, this is Odisha part, this is Telangana part and uh, this part is Maharashtra part. Okay, so Dandakaranya Plateau actually comes at a uh, you know culmination of four states or bordering of four states: Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Telangana, and Maharashtra. Okay, so here you have the Dantewada. Okay, that you just studied. Here you have something called KBK. What is KBK? Kalahandi, Bolangir, and Koraput. Okay, I told you Odisha is poor. Among Odisha, three districts that are even more poorer are these. Okay, unfortunately. Then comes Telangana. Okay, in Telangana, there is something called Karimnagar. That is part of the Dandakaranya Plateau. And Maharashtra, you have. Gachiroli. So, these put together is what they call as Dandakaranya Plateau. 
This is the Naxal heartland of India. Okay. It is mainly made up of or densely forested of sal and teak. There are two types of trees here, sal and teak. Because it is so densely forested, it is favorable for gorilla warfare. Okay. That is why these people uh, take uh, uh, <coughs> Go home today and revise the names. Don't don't keep revising for the next four days. Keep revising this chapter. It has a lot of names. Don't be overwhelmed. Nor don't try to feel sir is given a lot of facts. It will become easier. Okay, but learn with diagrams. Okay. The trick to learn learning facts is through diagrams, visualization. Okay. Fine. So this is uh, about the Eastern Plateau and Hills. The next is uh, the next is North Central Plateau and Hills. Okay, the next is North Central Plateau and Hills. North Central Plateau and Hills is also known as Vindian uh, Vindias. Okay, the Vindias they call it the Vindian Scarp Land. But don't forget, don't worry about the technicalities. Vindian rocks, North Central Plateau and Hills is famous for Vindian rocks. Okay, or they also call it Vindias. Okay, South Central Plateau and Hills is also called as Satpuras. Okay, North Central is Vindias, South Central is Satpuras. This North and South Central, this together, in NCRT they have given this a name together. That is known as. Yes. Satpuras, Vindhyas and Satpuras put together are known as Central Highlands. Okay, we will start. Now I am talking about this North Central Plateau and Hills. This is the first thing I will talk about. Yeah. Chotanagpur Plateau is nothing but Jharkhand. Okay. The Jharkhand is known as Chotanagpur Plateau. Jharkhand is part of Chotanagpur Plateau. I mean, sorry, Chotanagpur Plateau is part of Jharkhand. So where should it come? No, no, no. You, you tell me. I am expecting an answer. I am again asking you one more question to that question that Chotanagpur Plateau is another name for Jharkhand. Ancient, okay, see, Jharkhand is now a name that is used in this thing. When Santals were there long back, they used to not call it Jharkhand, they used to call it Chotanagpur. It is just a name that has changed, okay. Chotanagpur Plateau is nothing but Jharkhand, okay. So, obviously, it does not come here, got it, okay. I don't ask questions to humiliate you, so don't take it as a, you know, this, this thing. Not you, in general. Okay? I want you people to learn. That's my main uh, objective. Anyway, coming to North Central Plateau and Hills. Okay? Uh, Vindhyas. Sorry, one sec.
okay. This is the north central plateau and hills. So, is Aravalli part of peninsular plateau or is Aravalli part of Indo Gangetic plains? If I have drawn it there, it means plateaus, right? Aravalli is part of peninsular plateau. So, Aravalli is part of Gondwana land, okay? Aravalli is the old, okay, you write down. should see that in that list. Hmm? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. If you have not done this exercise, I mean, I am just telling for people who have not done this, look once in that list if you have not seen these places. Okay, you have to see these places once to get familiarized with it. Don't sit in Bayat, Vedwa, okay, that Bunal Khan, Malwa, don't do that. Okay? Look at the place properly. <coughs> so, first let me talk about Aravalis. Okay? I will talk about, I am talking about the North Central Plateau. This is the schemata of North Central Plateau and Hills. And uh, first I am talking about Aravalis. The oldest fold mountain in the world on, on earth is Aravalis. Oldest. Okay? It is 3.5 billion years old. oldest fold mountain, fold mountain, okay? it is called pre-Cambrian mountains, it is also called pre-Cambrian mountains. Rich in limestone, rich in limestone. Two river rises here, important rivers, others are Banas, B-A-N-A-S, B-A-N-A-S, Banas and Luni also rises somewhere there, but it is not exactly Naravalis, Sabarmati, okay, Sabarmati. You can write Luni, it is not wrong, write Luni also, but Luni in general is a seasonal river, it does not flow throughout the year, but you can write Luni, no issues. Okay, which is the highest point? Guru Shikar. Okay, Guru Shikar is the highest point of Aravalis. It is to the south. Okay, I have written three ranges, right? Not to south, it is the Guru Shikar is in the south, southernmost range. Okay, Jain pilgrimage center that Mount Guru Shikar is. Next, what is Malwa? Malwa is the catchment area of river Chambal. Okay. Malwa is the catchment area of river Chambal. What do you mean by catchment area? Catchment area is another name for drainage basin. Okay. Catchment is another area, a name for drainage basin. Okay. As she told, in I will put it in much more simpler words, the sphere of influence of Chambal and its tributaries, okay. Up to what sphere the influence of Chambal and its tributaries can be felt, that is known as Malwa, okay. This Malwa suffers from bad land topography, okay. It suffers from what we call as bad land topography. How does bad land come into picture or when do I term something as a bad land, okay. Now there is a land, there is a land, okay. This land will undergo, I will deforest this land for my own purpose. That is I can grow 
uh, I can create settlements or I can grow crops, whatever. I have deforested this land. So when there was vegetation, the vegetation used to protect the land from direct interception of rainfall. Okay, the rainfall used to not fall on the ground. The rainfall used to fall on the trees. Now I have removed the entire uh, trees. Now this land will undergo erosion. Okay, the land will start undergoing erosion. Look at different types of erosion here. Splash erosion. Sheet erosion. Rills. Gullies. Ravines. Okay. This shows the intensity of erosion. Okay. This shows the intensity of erosion and whenever a particular land reaches this stage, it is known as bad land topography. Okay. What is bad land topography? You cannot do anything there. I cannot grow crops. I cannot even build houses. I cannot build a road. Everything is spoiled. Okay. It becomes completely unproductive. Okay. These are known as ravines. So they call something called chumbal ravines. Okay. There is something called chumbal ravines and this chumbal ravines are present in Malwa. Okay. It is mainly in Malwa. Okay. That is why have you heard gully plugging? Gully plugging. Gully plugging is a way to rejuvenate the land that is done at this stage. See gullies. I plug the gullies to stop the erosion. If I cannot stop here and if the land crosses this stage and moves into ravine, it is very difficult. Okay. I have to somehow club stop the uh, erosion here and that stopping can be done by gully plugging. Okay. That is... Uh, and this thing different, but this is how uh, it happens. Okay, the erosion intensity of erosion takes place. Okay. All right, I'll go back. So, Malwa understood Malwa. Malwa is nothing but the area of influence of Chambal and its tributaries. Okay. The next is Bundelkhand. Bundelkhand. This Bundelkhand geographically shares border with two states, which and which? UP and MP, that is Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Okay. Ken Betwa interlinkage of river, have you heard this? Okay. This is the first river interlinking project that is taken up, taken, uh, you know, taken up in India. Okay. Ken Betwa interlinking project. Bundelkhand is known as Gnis country. Gnis. What is Gnis? What is Gnis? Granite metamorphosizes into Gnis. Okay. Because this Gnis rock is majorly found in Bundelkhand, they call it Gnis country. Okay. Gnis country. <coughs> Okay, next. Why are they interlinking? Because it is drought prone. There is no water there. Okay, that is why they are uh, working on the interlinking of the river project. Okay. Next is Bagel Khand. The next is Bagel Khand. Drainage basin of river Son. Okay, Bagel Khand is drainage basin of river Son. Limestone rich deposits. Limestone. It is rich in limestone deposits. Okay, and wherever limestone is there, what industries come up? Cement. Okay, cement industries automatically come up. So there are two places, Reva and Satna. Okay, there are two places called Reva and Satna. These two places are famous for cement industries. Fine.
finally the Vindian ranges okay Vindian ranges is a block mountain nothing else okay Vindian ranges. Now this entire Vindian uh, north central plateau and hills I told you is made up of what Vindian rocks okay Vindian is an age Vindian rocks that is one the second is there are also submarine rocks present here okay in this particular part north and central and that is in the Vindian range only you can take there are submarine rocks that is rocks belonging to oceanic origin that are, that are also present here okay and whenever a rock belonging to oceanic origin undergoes metamorphosis it becomes precious stones that is why this part is famous for precious stones have you heard panna okay panna is famous for what diamonds right like that there are a lot of places for precious stones in this region one example is panna okay so why is it famous because there is a lot of submarine rocks which have undergone metamorphism which has given rise to a lot of precious stones in this region okay so if they are given some precious stone and told it is there and you know that it is somewhere in central India put yes that is the philosophy okay they are not going to ask you like what I have told but you are going to deduce what I have told and put it in the answer that is what your aim is got it <coughs> spatial sense that is what they call it. Next. Bagel Kand, see Bagel Kand, somebody is asking Bagel Kand is part of Eastern Plateau and Central Island or Eastern Plateau or Central Island. Bagel Kand is uh, academically speaking, okay. Bagel Kand is part of North Central Plateau and Hills or Central Islands, okay. And Bagel Kand is shared by two states, which are these MP and Chhattisgarh, okay. MP and Chhattisgarh. So, I can say that it comes in uh, Central Islands rather than. Uh, Eastern Plateau and Hills. <coughs> Done. The, the next is Satpuras, okay, I will write, do the Satpuras here only. Satpuras means there are seven mountains, okay. Satpuras means there are group of seven mountains. These are the seven mountains, Rajpipla, Gawaligad, Satpura, Mahikala, Mahadeo, Bhavangad and the last is Amar Kantak. Okay. So all this put I have written from west to east. Don't get confused. Rajpipla, Gawaligad, Satpura, Maikala, Madhyo, Bhavangad and Amar Kantak. Amar Kantak is a place where it looks like Vindhyas is meeting Satpuras. Okay, it looks like it doesn't meet. Okay. <coughs> In geography, when we say meet, even if there's a gap of 500 kilometers, it is meeting only. Okay, so don't take geometrical meeting. Okay. <coughs> Satpuras is completely covered by flood basaltic lava. Okay, Satpuras is completely covered by flood basaltic lava. Where did it come from? We will discuss later. But it is completely covered by flood basaltic lava. Hence, there is black soil here. Hence, there is black soil. Okay. Just complete this diagram by drawing. What is this river? This is Tapi. Okay, just put it off, Tapi. Okay, this is the central islands of India. This is the central islands of 
India. <coughs> Fine. So today I'll stop it here. Tomorrow we'll continue. Tomorrow I can I'll, I'll extend it a little bit if needed because tomorrow we'll have to continue. I mean, complete the reverse system as well. Okay. I told you I have four days time. Two days for Indian geography. Two days for world geography. But I'll make sure that I do the justice and go. All right. That I can promise you. Okay. Was it helpful the style of teaching? It's okay, right? The speed. All right. So thank you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, if there's any doubt, yeah. Come again. Ah, uh, rocks in peninsula plateau, right? Ah, uh, that's what I have to tell you after the teaching is done. Otherwise, you will not relate to it. Okay? But remind me tomorrow. Uh. Hmm. Correct. There is one more uh, rift here. Okay. That is River Tapi. Okay. So Tapi, oh sorry, Satpura is actually sandwiched between Narvada ah, and Tapi. Exactly. Okay. Indian Strategic Petroleum Reserve Limited has established strategic petrol reserve facilities now. It's not. I mean, take it as a learning exercise, but don't give too much of uh, time there. That's all. Don't worry. Chill. Keep if you because after studying so long, you would have got the instinct. Now you will know. Are this and all the lakhs. Keep it. Hmm. But don't worry about those things. Thank you, you underestimated my class and brought a small book, is it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I was just kidding, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just kidding, man. Don't worry. Today in the oceanography class. I had a query that why is the continental shelf of Western Ghats broader than the continental shelf of Eastern Ghats? Continental shelf of Western Ghats. It is not, man. See, in the Atlas, what they have done, those people have given white color. That's why you are confused, no? In the NCRD, they have given otherwise. You see, if planes are broader, shelf will automatically be broader. Because, see, if this is the, if this is the, let us say this is water. Okay, this is water. This is continental shelf. Okay. Now, the more I remove the shelf outside the water, what is this? That's all. See, if this is broader, this is also broader. Are you getting this? If this is narrowing, what will be narrowing here? Planes will also. If this is shelf will narrow, even the planes will narrow. Okay. So, Western Ghats is submergent, hence both shelf as well as planes will be narrow. Eastern Ghats is emergent, so shelf and uh, planes will be broader. Yes, there is a correlation to that. Some people say whenever there is a mountain range running across the coastline, the uh, what is that? Uh, the continental shelf becomes narrower. Okay. Yes, narrower and I mean narrower or deeper. They both are the same. Okay. It, it narrow means it is bending down. Huh. Okay. So it, some so yes, there is a theory that. And some people, in order to explain that whatever is given in the atlas, they use this theory to back it up. Okay. But in reality, see, you go with NCRT. NCRT may what they have they told? They have told eastern coast as broader continental shelf, western coast as narrow continental shelf. Go with that. Go with that. Submergent coastline. See, if if this is the coastline, okay, if this is the coastline, if some I'm dipping it down, is it becoming I mean narrow or broader? Narrow, right? So western Ghats, that's what is happening, submergent. If I keep removing something up like this, will it become narrow or broader? Broader. That's what is happening in the eastern side. That's all. No, I'm talking about western plains and coastal plains, but 